everyone, George here, and we are back again with my implementation of Five Nights at Freddy's inside of the Unity engine. Uh, if we left off from the last video where we were starting to mess around with the re animatronic repair room, where we're going to be able to build and construct our own animatronic during the gameplay. Now, right now I'm going in adding floor elements. I'm going to export them out after I set the UVs up, make sure they're all spanning the zero to one space so I can make a tileable texture that I can work with inside of Substance Painter. And then once I do that, I bring the asset in. Now we have the 3D model. I go and throw a concrete on there and I kind of want it to be a little bit more grungy and I throw a uh, limestone wall that looks like it's kind of broken apart, but nothing really quite works for me. So instead I kind of lightly add the detail by messing with the levels and the contrast. So it's slightly showing through, but there's no real huge breaks. I also add some stains and a few other artifacts to the uh, ground to make it a little bit more interesting visually. And I go ahead, I check to make sure that all my export settings are proper, export this stuff out into a file so I can bring it into Unity for testing. And I'm gonna be doing that with each of the assets as I slowly build the room. So first we're gonna start with the floor, grab all those elements, make sure they're named and in a group, export them out, bring them into Unity separately, and then have them, since they're in the right location, everything just automatically goes to the right place. And then I assign the texture to the proper materials, and then just take a look at how they, how it all seems to be. Then we jump back into Maya. I'm gonna now go ahead and make the walls. And at this point, I'm kind of on the fence as to how I want to deal with the walls. Uh, I'm thinking about restructuring different parts of the level just because things aren't quite working with the grid structure I have laid down. I add the walls in, but then decide to go ahead and delete the back elements and just make them singular planes. There was really no reason for me to make them anything more than planes in this particular case. I cut the one uh, in half, so I have a half segment, and I'm gonna export both of these assets out after making sure there's a material attached to it and bring that over in a Substance Painter. However, before, I am going to grab the floor material I created, save that as a smart material, and bring that in. I'm not going to use that directly, but I just want to have the colors and the, the, the tones and so forth as reference for while I'm making this, this uh, uh, the actual, as I'm making the uh, the walls. Now I go in and I add a, I want the, the, everything to be made out of cinder blocks, but I'm not quite happy with the, the coloring, the levels and so forth. So I make them a little darker and I go ahead and try to bring that limestone in to try to merge the floor and the wall, but it doesn't work at all. So instead I go ahead and I find a nice sort of concrete cracked structure instead that I add to the background of it so that it adds the, that as a detail uh, with the um, the cinder blocks on the underside of it. And then I begin to mess around with the different levels and how they interact using a mask. And you end up with this sort of harshly splattered sort of look on the wall from the paint, but you still get that underlying concrete and some of the texture of it inside of that as well. I'm kind of happy with this, so I go ahead and export out my materials. And then we're going to export those out of Maya bring them into Unity just like before, set up our materials by assigning the textures to the correct slots, and then taking a look at how the whole thing is. Now at this point, I go ahead and I start, I don't like how blue everything is, and that's because we're using the standard shader, or excuse me, the standard lighting setup. So I go in there and I make sure that I'm using a procedural map that's all black, no no, uh, you know, blues and, and browns on the ground. And uh, everything now is sort of this neutral black tone that I can start to work with and figure out how I want things to look. I go ahead and add several spotlights generally to the area and raise them up to add a, a slight bit of lighting, a nice kind of dark, moody lighting to the entire scene. Uh, nice blending, nothing too dramatic anywhere at this point. I go ahead and bake all that out, add a reflection probe to the scene as well, just so that I can get a gauge of how the, uh, the uh, fence posts are reflecting materials. Go back into Maya, I basically take the floor, duplicate it, flip it 180 degrees around, raise it up, and that becomes my ceiling. Now I have to say I don't recommend working with ceiling elements this way, I should have left them facing the bottom up. It just seems that within Substance Painter it's a lot harder to work with elements as you're trying to look upwards in space than it is looking downward for some reason. Um, that just seems to be where the light is situated and as you move it around it never quite works out just right. So here I'm going through Substance Source, trying to find some materials I like, and I need the ceiling to have some character. So I decided to use two different layers. I'm using a thick strokes paint, which is going to add nice um, different colors of strokes. And then I'm using a Spanish plaster, which adds really nice thick blotchy elements to my ceiling. In addition, I wanted to have seams, so I use one of the concrete panels materials underneath everything so that I get that normal seam going through it export all that stuff out, export out the assets as before from Maya into Unity, set up my materials as usual, 
and we're ready to go. I bring that in. And I'm not terribly happy at first with how things look. And that's partly because uh, it's one sided, which means the light from the sources above are go shining right through it and hitting the ground. And it's really not looking very good even after a bake. So I decide to go back into Substance Painter and I increase the levels of the, the normal intensity, basically, of some of those different elements. And I also decide to add some additional coloration by using a different kind of rust uh, vaguely over the entire surface, just so it has a little bit of brown and darker grays to it than before. And with that, I'm a little happier with how things look, but really it's about time that I start thinking about lighting and how the entire scene is going to be set up. So I'm going to, in a few seconds, bring in the rig which is where you're going to build your animatronic. And here you saw I brought in some cubes. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm checking scale. I know that two cubes stacked on each other is a little over six feet. Uh, that's a meter by a meter, two meters tall, basically. And uh, I'm not really enjoying the scale of things, but I also noticed there are some problems with the rig itself. Uh, the center pivot point isn't where I want it to be. And rather than giving it a whole new group and reassigning it to another pivot, I go back into Maya. And now I'm searching for the right location where the rig actually was. Uh, I kind of lost it for a little bit there. I uh, go ahead and set everything up and I decide I want to have some sort of specialized lighting above this element. I'm really not thinking anything through at this point. I'm not looking at reference material. All I'm doing is I'm creating just a big old cylinder and I just, just decide to design on the fly something above it that would have multiple spotlights. Not really sure how I'm going to implement this yet in Unity. So I go in, I just add a cylinder, I recess it, and then I add sort of a bulge in the center so it kind of mimics a dome light. And then I'm going to duplicate that object several times to make all the different lights that are going to be inset inside of this larger light in just a minute. And once I do that, then I just keep doing that until I'm happy. It's something interesting looking at least. And uh, yeah, so here you can see I add the first element, going to scale that down, add the second element, rotate them into place, add the other elements, and now I just play with the scales until I get something that fits. And I play with the size of each one in the position so that I have something unique and interesting. So none of these are quite the same size. It's a, it's a myriad layout of different lights, basically. Um, we're not going to add a dozen lights inside of Unity, maybe one, two, or three, uh, just to make this work. I'm not sure how I'm going to use it yet, whether I want it to be you know, a dramatic effect where things light up. Uh, all of a sudden they slowly turn on and you see the animatronic there that you're going to be building. Um, or if we're just going to have it all as one single spotlight. So I leave everything as separate elements inside of a larger group. That way I can play around with them inside of Unity or just mess with them at a later date rather than having to uncombine them and then recombine them. And we'll figure out optimization at a later point, basically. I had some slices and seams here. Now I'm going ahead and unwrapping everything. Uh, I don't do the best job at unwrapping this. I kind of, since they're all just big old cylinders, I kind of just leave them as such. And uh, um, that kind of gives me some difficulties when I go into Substance Painter. And you'll, you'll see that in a minute while I'm trying to make selections. Normally selections would be really easy because I'd make cuts around where I expect different parts of the materials to be. Like the light itself would be a different material than the surrounding aluminum, but I leave them all as one giant UV set, which, uh, just you'll see it, it doesn't make things perfect. So take your time when cutting things up. Let's put it that way. Cut things based upon the materials you uh, plan to associate just makes your life a lot easier when you decide to use some of the selection tools and substance painter later. Now I'm going to re-export not only the top, but the bottom, even though in a prior video I had already textured it, I don't like what I had done. I used wood on the bottom. It just doesn't make any sense with the layout and the way the scene is set up to be using wood on that. So here I just add a, a general metallic thing. I'm playing around with some of the different rust filters. I decided not to go too heavy handed with any of those characteristics. I just leave it lightly on the edges. And now we're finding um, a glass with some sort of a, um, a nice character to it in this way, in this case, the hammered glass. And here is where its selection became kind of a pain in the rear because I didn't uh, cut out the inside parts. This would have been much easier. It would have been one click if I had uh, cut out the inside part and left the outside part as a separate element. But instead, I've kind of got to make this selection slowly. Um, but it doesn't take too long. And then I add my emissive uh, uh, channel to this so that it can light up so that in Unity we can actually have emissive channel as well. Now I'm going back to the bottom and it's also going to be just very similar to what we had before, just metal, but I'm not going to include any kind of wood this time around. Going back in, adding the rust as well, not making it too dramatic, just a little bit here and there. And then I decide, why don't we try adding some other things to it? It just looks kind of plain. You kind of can't see it because the elements are so thin. So why not add some of this caution tape? I would have to go back in and unwrap some of the different areas to make the caution tape work properly on all the areas. So I look just to see where the UVs are set up properly. 
And I kind of like them just on those two areas right there on the ribs. It's just something that's a little bit different. So you see it, you notice it a little bit more. I also decided to do something reflective on the bottom, but not too reflective. So I dial that back down. And now I just play with the orientation until I get something that I like visually and having it kind of at a um, diagonal looks kind of nice. Now I'm diving in, I find, uh, why not use some particle effects? I find a oil asphalt. And while the asphalt part isn't really what I want, the oil is. So if I use it liberally, or excuse me, not liberally, but sparingly actually, as droplets uh, for a puddle, I can go in there and remask over that and kind of paint out some of that detail. So it looks just kind of like we have a grimy, gritty surface. And it's gonna have some of that nice oil stain characteristic of the multiple colors of rainbow sheen. And I go ahead and use the splatter uh, effect on the air, on the actual object as well to add some other, it just gives it some nice characters, breaking up all the different parts of it, uh, which I kind of like. So now I go back into Maya, I make sure everything's set up right, named properly, export it out, bring over my materials, set the materials up over in the inspector as usual, make sure that that's all working properly. And now I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop my um, my asset into the scene. And then we're going to start playing around with some a little bit of lighting just to see how to get it, you know, the ambiance of the scene, how to make it look a little bit more dramatic, a little bit more scary. I duplicate those back elements because obviously we're going to be the animatronic is going to be all over the place on this level. Add in the uh, the spot, the top part of it, add in a spotlight, just, just a single spotlight to start with. And now I'm going to play with light baking. I make it blue. I'm going to dial back the lights above and kind of make it very intense, which is going to make things look a lot nicer. There we go. Much more dramatic. Uh, obviously, this is the central area where you're going to want to look. We are going to play with it some more, but for the most part, that's what we got out of this entire thing. So I'm kind of happy with it. Next up, I guess we need to uh, see about getting some gameplay in there, see how the whole thing works. I'll see you next time. So long, everyone. Bye. Hey, everyone. George here. And if you enjoyed the content, consider giving me a like. And if you had any questions about the content or want to know anything else in particular, then go ahead and leave a comment below. I'm pretty good at responding to things lately. And if you really want to support the channel, consider becoming a patron. I'll see you all in the next video. So long. Goodbye.